as a child in the 1980s, I did things that in today's world would be considered extremely dangerous. Simple things, like going outside to play with your friends for hours and not having to check in at all. Or picking up Coke cans for a neighbor so he would give us a whopping 50 cents to go get some candy at the store. Nowadays, those innocent childhood freedoms just simply aren't around anymore. But one of the things I remember doing all the time back in the day was hanging out at my local bowling alley. Me and my friends would gather up all our money we had earned to head there and spend it on arcade games. So one day, I went with my usual 50 cents to play a couple. When we walked in, I saw people surrounding a new arcade I had never seen before. As I walked closer, I noticed the bright yellow words on the marquee, Renegade. As I pushed my way through the crowd surrounding it, I finally saw it. My mind was completely blown. I remember seeing this guy wearing a black vest, kicking the crap out of everyone on screen. It was so awesome looking. As a fan of martial arts movies, I was immediately hooked. I waited my turn with my quarter sweating in my hands. After a bit, it was finally my time to give it a go. I popped the quarter in, and before I knew it, I was surrounded by bad guys. I started mashing the buttons repeatedly and moving the stick in every direction. After about 45 seconds, I had lost and my turn was over. But on the way home, that's all each one of us could talk about, was how cool the game was. That night, I ended up staying in my friend's house. As usual, we was playing Nintendo late into the night. When I reached over to his pile of NES games to pick what was next, I pulled out a game called Renegade? I was shocked. My buddy must have seen my disbelief on my face because he said, Oh yeah, I've owned that for a while now. And it sucks. It's slow and boring. But I insisted we pop it in anyways and play it. And to be fair, it wasn't that great. And we moved on to the next game rather quickly. But now, 30 some years later, let's take another look at it. And maybe it's better than I remember. One big difference you notice immediately is that it's not two player co-op. I know it was made in the early days of the NES, but it would have been a much better game if a second player could have joined in on the butt kicking like in Double Dragon 2. So anyways, you play as a guy named Mr. K, who wears this ugly brown jumpsuit, and you must fight a variety of street gangs through four stages. The control is kind of clunky feeling. You move around just fine, but somehow I found myself getting surrounded on multiple occasions. It's not an easy game, but it's not a brutally hard game either. But I do recommend using the jump kick as much as possible if you expect to beat it. If you don't, you're going to have a tough time. Get used to that jump kick. You do have a punch and kicks like normal, but they're just too slow. People walk up behind you, break your combos, grab you. You get double teamed a lot in this game and surround it easily, and it drains your health quick. Plus, they have weapons and you don't, which isn't fair at all. You do have a dash punch you can use, which is pretty useful in tight spots though. Stage 1, you're in a subway parking lot. The graphics look okay, but the entire platform is blue which I thought was just weird. The main strategy here is to Van Damme kick everybody in the face. The stage boss is named Jack, and he's pretty tough unless you spam the jump kick, then it's a breeze. Stage two is the biker gang's parking lot. These Karate Kid rejects are wielding change trying to knock your block off. After you take care of them, you have to do some more jump kicking. Imagine that. This time, you're trying to jump kick these bikers who are trying to run you over. After you knock the last one off, you jack his bike and get to do some road rash style beat down on the highway. Make sure you don't let them knock you into the bottom of the screen or you will just wreck. Just drive into them and kick them off the bikes. Joel is the stage two boss and he's just like Jack pretty much. So use the jump kick in his grill method and he'll be taken care of in no time. Stage 3 is the toughest stage so far. It has these Ada Wong knockoffs, 
who love to hit you with purses. I figured out using the jump kick works best on them also. Just back yourself in a corner and spam it up. At the end of the level, you have a choice to either go in the left door or the right door. Each one takes you to something different. The right entrance being the stage boss, who is literally a seven foot tall woman, who I honestly could never beat. I don't think she can be beaten. I thought about looking up game genie codes for infinite health just to see if it's possible. So I restarted the entire game and chose the left entrance and it was a room full of chicks you gotta lay the smack down on. Beating women up in games wasn't a big deal in the 80s apparently. After that, on to stage 4, the final stage. This level is like some sort of maze. It's the toughest level by far in the game. It has normal enemies and also previously defeated bosses. Kind of like the last stage on Streets of Rage for the Genesis. You gotta be careful too not to go in a wrong door or it warps you back to the previous stage. Which is lame and it's just a sad way of prolonging the game. The order took me a couple times until I figured it out. But one of the last rooms you fight in kind of baffles me. You're in a room and then all of a sudden these motorcycle dudes start trying to run you over. How do they get their bike in there? It's such a small room anyways. After you beat a couple rooms, you finally meet the last boss. It's some dude wearing all green fatigues named Mabu. He's not that tough if you spam the jump kick in his mouth method. But you gotta be careful because he has a gun as his main attack. So if he hits you with that, it's a one hit death. But after spamming the jump kick long enough, you will beat him and get to see the cool ending of the game. Which is literally just the credits? Which is very lazy. I put the work in, at least give me an ending. The arcade version at least had me fighting for my girl. The NES version, you have no reason at all. No cutscene, showing your girl getting rescued or anything. You just start fighting a game for no reason apparently. Which is kind of funny when you think about it. As for the game as a whole, it's not very good, and it's really dated. But for the time, it could have been a decent weekend rental. Beat it and take it back. I wouldn't recommend playing it now over something like Double Dragon 2. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you have any Renegade memories, leave them in the comment section below. And be sure to like and subscribe. And hit that little bell icon so you don't miss out on my upcoming videos. Until next time, keep it retro.